Hey friends, it's Cassidy and Danielle. And we're here to show you a super fun Palm Sunday craft. Look at this picture to see the craft that we're gonna make together. Okay, uh, then you're gonna trace your hand on your piece of paper. And once you're done, you'll cut it out. Next, we're gonna take two craft sticks stuck together. Or, if you don't have craft sticks, you can tape two rulers together. And now, we're gonna glue all of our hands onto the stick. This is what Danielle and I's palm leaf looks like, but if yours looks different, that's okay too. Now, you're gonna take a piece of ribbon or yarn or anything else, and you're gonna tie it around the base of your palm leaf. And if you need your parents' help, get them to help you with this. And now, we're gonna curl the edges of our ribbon to make it look pretty. There we go. And if you're using yarn, you can make a pretty bow instead of curling your ribbon. If you guys wanna send us pictures of your palm leaves, you can email Tracy at tracy at ladnerbaptist.ca. Thanks, Cassidy and Danielle, for showing us how to make those palm leaves. And I am so excited today to have Cassidy back with us. Everybody wave hi to Cassidy. Hey Cassidy. So fun having you here. Here's a fun fact. There were a lot of date palm trees where Jesus lived. They were a symbol for Israel and were even printed on coins. When people saw them, they thought of their nation. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, waving palm branches was like saying, Help us be our king. Today, we'll hear about people celebrating Jesus on Palm Sunday. And we'll celebrate Jesus too. Are you ready for some Palm Sunday fun? Let's start by celebrating Jesus' amazing power. There's power, there's power. Now it's time to check out our Bible point. It's we celebrate Jesus. Every time you hear someone say the words, we celebrate Jesus, I want you to make fists and pop them open like fireworks 
and say, hooray, Jesus. Let's try that once together. We celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus. Excellent. We had the same Bible point for our lessons at Christmas time. Allow us to present to you the top five reasons to celebrate Jesus. I'll need your help to count them. Are you ready? Okay. Number five. His power is amazing. He can do anything. Number four. He's the best teacher ever. He's patient and helps us understand what God is like. Number three, he's forgiving. Even when we mess up, he still wants to be our friend. Number two, he's always with us. No matter where we go or no matter what we do, Jesus will never leave us. And number one, Jesus is our rescuer. His death on the cross made a way for us to be his forever friend. We celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus. And do you remember who our Bible memory buddy was at Christmas time? It's Olivia the barn owl. How much do you know about barn owls like Olivia? Let's find out with a this or that challenge. You'll hear two fun facts about barn owls, and it's up to you to decide which is true, this fact or that. The barn owl's heart-shaped face isn't just cool looking. God made it that shape for a reason. Does the heart shape direct sound to the owl's ears or does it act as camouflage when the owl hunts? I need you to cup your ears to vote for this or cover your face to vote for that, camouflage. The heart shape directs sound to a barn owl's ears. Let's find out more. We'll watch our Bible Memory Buddy video. Eek! I'm so happy to see you! I'm Olivia, and I'm a barn owl. We barn owls have beautiful brown feathers covering our wings. But it's our white faces that I'm told is our best feature. Does the shape of my face remind you of anything? Most people say it looks like a heart. Do you see it? God shaped our faces like this for a reason. The heart shape collects and directs sound toward our inner ears so we can hear better. You see, our ear openings are on our faces, right behind our eyes. You can't see them as easily as I can see your human ears. Each ear is different. They have different shapes and they're located at different places on each side of my face. One's higher than the other. <laughs> Check your ears. Are they straight? Yes. <laughs> Looks like you are not a barn owl. Phew. Speaking of hearing, have you heard the good news? God loves you. <laughs> it's true. In the Bible book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, it says... For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son. God sent Jesus to be your rescuer. In the Bible, God's people thought Jesus came to be their king and save them from Rome, the nation that ruled over them. Especially when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, people threw down their coats and palm branches and said, praise God, Hosanna. But Jesus was a different kind of rescuer. Jesus saves you from sin and makes a way for you to be friends with God forever. You see, sin is like a sickness that you can't get rid of on your own. Sin causes you to make wrong choices and choose your way over God's way. Sin messes up everything. But God loves you and made a way to help you and all people. He sent Jesus to be your rescuer and save people from sin and death. Jesus rescues you and forgives you when your face doesn't show love. He's a friend who always hears you when you talk to him about your struggles. And he'll be right there with you, 
helping you choose God's way. Having a friend like that? Now that's something to celebrate. We celebrate Jesus! Hooray, Jesus! Our Bible memory verse comes from the part of the Bible called the Gospels. The verse was written by one of Jesus' friends who spent a lot of time with him when he was here on earth. Let's say the verse together. It's John 3.16. I'll say a line, and then you repeat it after me. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son. Chap John chapter 3, verse 16. Good morning, everybody. Today, our Bible story comes from the Gospel of Matthew. The book of Matthew tells God's people the good news. Jesus is the Messiah, or rescuer, the one we've been waiting for. Instead of simply reading this Bible story, you're all going to play an important part. Watch and follow along throughout the story. Jesus and his friends were heading to Jerusalem. Actually, a lot of God's people were. It was almost the Passover, which was a national holiday for the Jewish people to celebrate. They'd go to the temple in Jerusalem and remember how God rescued their ancestors from Egypt. Yep, there they go toward Jerusalem. Let's join them. Imagine that we're going on a road trip. We're heading to Jerusalem, so let's, but you know, this road trip we have to walk. So let's pretend to go on a walk. Now Jesus and his friends probably walked and talked. Maybe they even told some jokes to pass the time. Speaking of jokes, how can you tell that elephants like to travel? They always pack their trunks. All right, one more. What happens when you wear a watch on an airplane? Time flies. <laughs> okay, so Jesus and his friends were almost to Jerusalem when they passed through the town of Bethphage. You thought my jokes were random? Well, Jesus had an out-of-the-blue assignment for two of his friends, so let's read about it in the Bible. We're reading from Matthew chapter 21, verses 2 to 3. He said to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you'll find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Huh. Jesus' friends may have wondered what he was up to. Let's scratch our heads like we're trying to figure out what's going on here. So was he tired of walking? Or maybe he was fulfilling a prophecy about a king riding into Jerusalem. So I want you all to sit up straight and give me your best excited face. Jesus' friends may not have understood what he was up to, but they obeyed. They brought Jesus the donkey and the colt. A colt is a young donkey that's not yet four years old. They put their coats on the colt, and then Jesus was ready to ride. The other people traveling to Jerusalem must have noticed Jesus. Let's read what they did. So this is Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 and 9. A very large crowd spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Some of the people went ahead of him, and some followed. They all shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Imagine there's a road right down the center of your room. Okay, so Jerusalem is that way. And Jesus is coming from that way. It's kind of hard to imagine all of this. And this is why we call today Palm Sunday. People waved palm branches and they spread their coats on the road ahead of Jesus, sort of like a red carpet sort of a thing. So I want you to wave your hands, or if you made palm branches, wave your palm branches. The word Hosanna means save us now. It's a worship term, but it's also saying save us, we pray. Save us now. God's people were excited. They made such a ruckus that others in Jerusalem wondered what was going on. So let's read more. So this is Matthew chapter 21, verses 10 to 11. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. The people asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus. He is the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Who was this guy on a donkey? It was Jesus, the hero coming to save the day. They must have thought Jesus was finally going to Jerusalem to save them. And he was, just not in the way that they thought. You know, every hero has a backstory, 
a defining moment that would lead to their super status. Jesus does too. Let's rewind to the beginning of the book of Matthew. So everyone, I want you to pretend like you're running backwards in place, like we're rewinding. An angel had told Jesus' dad, Joseph, what to name the baby sent from God. The angel had said to him, Jesus, because he will save his people from sin. Jesus didn't save the people from being stuck under Rome's rule like they were hoping, but he saved all of humanity from sin and what it does to us. Sin makes us choose our way instead of God's way. It causes us to hurt ourselves and others. Left on our own, we are stuck in sin. But there's good news. We aren't alone. Jesus frees us from sin. That's why we celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus. We humans get stuck in sin, but Jesus frees us. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son. That's our Bible memory verse. Jesus saves us from sin and gives us freedom to live as his forever friend. While we're here on earth, we'll still struggle with sin. That's for sure. But someday God will make all things new and get rid of sin once and for all. Until then, Jesus is with us. He's there to help us make good choices and to rescue and forgive us when we're stuck in sin. That's reason to celebrate. So we celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus. God, I just want to thank you that you have come to save us, that you died on the cross to save us from our sin, from being stuck, because on our own, we can't do it. But you rescue each of us. Each of us who choose to follow you don't have to be stuck in sin. Thank you, God, that you help us. Thank you, God, that you love us. And thank you, God, that you have awesome, good plans for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus' name means the Lord saves. I wonder, what do you need from Jesus today? How can he save or help you with what you're going through? Listen while I read something about our friend Jesus. As you listen, think about some things that you want to ask Jesus for help with. Superheroes come in all shapes and sizes, but they have one thing in common. Nope, it's not superpowers. Batman doesn't have any, remember? You can have that discussion with Angela. Or flowing capes. It's not being rich or having a hidden lair or wearing a mask. It's that superheroes rescue people, usually just before something awful happens. And that's great, but those rescued people usually need to be rescued again when something else goes wrong. There's only one rescuer who rescues, whose rescue lasts forever, and that's Jesus. He came to rescue us, to rescue you from sin. He came to make a way you can be friends with God, starting right now and forever in heaven someday. That's the sort of rescuer Jesus is. When he rescues you, you stay rescued. All right, friends, there's more questions that you can look at and answer on the sheet that was emailed to your parents if you would like to do that. We're going to close in prayer, and then we have to say goodbye to somebody. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for being our rescuer. I thank you that we can celebrate you today, and we can celebrate you every day. And I thank you for sending your son Jesus, because you loved us so much, to be our rescuer. Please be with these children as they go into their week. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now it's time to say goodbye to Olivia the Barn Owl. Do you guys see Olivia anywhere? Oh, there she is. Bye, Olivia. Looking out, it's a great big world.